welcome to our fifth and final challenge in the Easter Spring STEM series. This one is called Bean Bind. Due to some malfunctioning equipment in the bean factory, all the beans have been mixed up and the Easter Bunny needs your help. Of course, if you are not celebrating Easter in your classroom, just swap out the factory manager for the Easter Bunny and you can do this challenge any time of year. Let's take a moment to check out the materials in the STEM challenge cycle. This is the STEM challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. I've added a pop-in card to that video here, as well as a link in the description. First thing you're gonna to need to decide is how many different types of beans and which beans do you want to use? Now, if you have young students, I would recommend just going with two types of beans, jelly beans because they're rather large and maybe black beans because the difference in size is so large that it should be easier to design something to help sort those beans. For older students, I like to add in a third type of bean. I usually choose pinto because it's different enough from either of the other two in size. If you're kind of on the fence between having just two types of beans or three, I would recommend going with three. What you can do is sort of differentiate within the same challenge by telling the students the main goal is to sort the jelly beans beans from all the other beans. And then you can tell students if they wanna go above and beyond that they're looking for a device that does sort all three types of beans. The criteria and constraints are straightforward on this one. The students need to design a device that when the beans are poured on or in it, it sorts them into their type. And the main constraint outside of time and materials is that the device must do the work, meaning you cannot manually pick and sort the beans yourself. If you're looking to increase difficulty, you can increase the number of types of beans and also look at how close they are in size to each other. Obviously, the closer they are in size, the harder it will be to sort them from each other. And the other thing you can do is require that the students build a single step machine. So the beans are poured on once and it sorts everything out, as opposed to what you'll see demonstrated here today, which is a two-step process. Now, if you have one big collection of beans like this, you can have one student come up and get a scoop of beans to test their design. Another way you can manage that is when the students are actually working on their designs, you can come around and issue one scoop of beans in a little bowl or cup so they'll have them there at their station. The students will pour the beans in or on their design and attempt to sort them. After the students have used their bean sorters, they will count how many beans were successfully sorted and how many errors there were. Younger students can stop right there and just record those numbers. Older students, you'll wanna have them actually calculate the percentage of success and the percentage of error. And if you wanna break that down further, you can have them record success and errors per bean type. And you'll probably need to remind them again, not to manually pick any beans out. You can see in this demonstration here that we have a pretty good design for sorting out the jelly beans, but we're gonna to need to do some work on the pinto beans versus black beans. There were a lot of errors. Initially, the holes here were too small. And then in trying to correct that, we made them a bit too big. Such is the life of an engineer. To extend on this one, you can do some research on industrial machines that do sorting, like the coin sorters or at recycling plants. You could also connect this to the California gold rush because this isn't too dissimilar from actually trying to sort the gold from the rest of the earth. If you wanna tie in some ELA on this, you could have students write an article for Wikipedia in which they are challenging the California gold rush and saying history got it wrong. It was really the California bean rush. And as always, it's a great idea to have students generate their own word problems based on their designs and challenge other students and groups to solve them. So now you have everything you need in order to conduct this challenge in your class on your own. But as always, I have a lot of extra goodies in the resource, so take a second and check it out. This time-saving resource contains everything you need, including modifications for use with second through eighth graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the rest is ready and waiting. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards, links to my STEM challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from each challenge and the bean bind materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results and cross-curricular extension suggestions. You'll find an editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. For student handouts, there are two versions, four page expanded room for response for younger students and a two page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension handouts, you'll find task card tips, editable student samples, and an answer key log, as well as create your own word problems and process flow templates. This resource is available individually and as part of the discounted Easter Spring and Mega STEM Challenge bundles. Links can be found in the description below the video. 
I hope you and your students have a great time doing Bean Bind. I will be back next week with an Earth Day STEM challenge you won't want to miss. Have an excellent week. I will see you next time. <music>